on Veterans Day, November 11, 2021. Americans once again gathered at the most visited spot in the nation's capital, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. They assembled to pay their respects at the symbol of ultimate sacrifice for our country. Not only the loss of life, but the loss of identity. What made this moment especially significant was it marked the 100th anniversary of the dedication of this hallowed ground. Just over a century ago, the United States and its allies emerged victorious from what was then known as the Great War. Much of Europe lay in ruins, and more than 20 million people, military and civilians, died. America entered the war three years after it had begun, but in less than two years had suffered more than 115,000 service members killed. The story of the American Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers starts with House Joint Resolution 426, which was first proposed on December 21, 1920, by Congressman Hamilton Fish of New York. Congressman Fish, a combat veteran with the 369th Infantry Regiment, Harlem Hellfighters, saw firsthand the devastation modern warfare inflicted upon his soldiers, as well as witnessing partial remains buried by the French with no identification to put on the field cross except unidentified American soldier. Motivated by his wartime experiences, Congressman Fish proposed legislation that would provide for the bringing to the United States of a body of an unknown American who was a member of the American Expeditionary Forces who served in Europe and lost his life during the World War and for the burial of the remains with appropriate ceremonies. Congressman Fish strongly felt that the unknown soldier should not be taken from any particular battlefield, but should be so chosen that nobody would know his identification or the battlefield he comes from. He should represent in himself the North, the South, the East, and the West. No distinction whatever, either in the matter of rank, color, or wealth. The legislation was approved by President Woodrow Wilson on March 4, 1921, and the process began to bring home the unknown soldier. Four candidates were selected from four American cemeteries in France and brought to the Hotel de Ville in chalon sur marne where the final selection was made on October 24, 1921 by Army Sergeant Edward F. Younger, a veteran of World War I assigned to the Army of Occupation. From this point until his burial in Arlington National Cemetery, the World War I unknown soldier was never alone, constantly being watched over by soldiers and an American Legion member in uniform. After a night in Paris, the World War I unknown soldier was transported by train to the port of Le Havre, and the Army passed responsibility of guarding the unknown soldier to the crew of the USS Olympia and the Marines assigned especially for the mission of returning him home. Secured to the deck, because the coffin was too large for the passageways on the ship, it was nearly lost when the Olympia withstood a hurricane for 11 days en route to the United States. On November 9, 1921, the Olympia safely arrived at the Washington Navy Yard, and the unknown was escorted to the U.S. Capitol, where he lay in state until his burial in Arlington National Cemetery on November 11th, then known as Armistice Day, marking the day World War I ended in 1918.
And we had President Harding, we had Vice President Coolidge, and they came here, they represented the nation. President Harding presented an address, which was the keynote speech of the funeral. And then afterwards, many heads of state from both the United States and other countries visited here. Following the burial, no provision had been made to continue the guard, and the unknown soldier gravesite remained unsecured for the next four years. The view of Washington, D.C. from the site of the tomb of the unknown soldier is unrivaled, and early on, numerous visitors to Arlington National Cemetery used the unknown soldier's grave as a picnic table, and the area around this grave becoming misused. Two civilian watchmen from the Quartermaster Department were assigned during the daytime to ensure the public treated this grave with respect. Again, we're in the middle of Arlington National Cemetery. This is hollow ground. We are an active military cemetery. We have 25 to 30 burials every day, Monday through Friday, and several on Saturday as well. When the unknown soldier was originally uh, interred, the public was able to come all the way up to the tomb. Well, unfortunately, with time, we, there were a lot of visitors here, and not everyone treated that gravesite with the honor and respect that it deserved. In 1926, responsibility of guarding the tomb fell to the U.S. Army. And so the Army assigned guards to make sure that we respected the gravesites of these unknown. A sarcophagus was added in 1931, with the rear featuring the inscription, here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. Five years later, the vigil became 24 hours a day. Several different units provided sentinels over the years, but in April 1948, the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, was permanently assigned the duty. For the last 83 years, um, members of the, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier platoon have maintained a constant vigil um, over that. I think with that comes a certain amount of mystique. I think with that comes a certain amount of mystery out there about the public on how they execute their mission, what it takes to be selected to do it. So I think some of the misconceptions and, and challenges there is, from the misconception side, is that all those soldiers volunteer to be down there. They arrive to the unit, they look at that mission down there, they say, that's something that I want to be a part of, and they volunteer, and that the processes and procedures are in place to train and develop them to be the sentinels that really are, in many ways, the, the face of the Army. As it relates to the challenges of the organization, is that the mission down there is 24-7. It doesn't stop. Rain or shine, uh, snow, sleet, at 2 a.m. On, uh, on Christmas morning, uh, there is a sentinel that is maintaining the vigil down there at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So though it is what a lot of the American public sees, it continues outside the public's eye particularly during the last year during the pandemic when the cemetery was closed for most of the year. There weren't the traditional hundreds and even thousands of people on the plaza every hour watching the changing of the guard. It was often quiet. It was just the birds and the squirrels, and, but the processes and the procedures and the de dedication to how they accomplish their mission doesn't change. The road, especially through 2020 and a pandemic, the road was complicated, to say the least. Everything is traditions-based, so there was a lot of things that we had to kind of set aside. Not set aside, but maintain the integrity of our tradition and our mission, but also look at things from a different lens to make sure we can accomplish the same missions. But with anything that continues nonstop, 24-7, 365 days a year, it's, it's hard duty. It's long hours, it's repetitive hours, there's weekends, 
holidays, anniversaries, birthdays that are all missed by the soldiers down there. To maintain that schedule, maintain that tempo and that vigil down there and all the preparation that goes into it, which counts for countless hours, for every hour that a sentinel walks uh, on the mat at the tomb. There's countless hours that go into preparing for that. That's hard work and I think that a lot of the, the backside preparation and training that goes into that isn't seen by the public and it truly reflects a lot of the dedication that the Sentinels put into their mission. We're all humans at the end of the day. Um, we all, most of us all have families, um, either married with our own families or we have families back home, you know. It, the general public doesn't, I think the disconnect is they just, they just don't realize like we're just like them. You know, we have a job, most of the general public has a job, they go to their job and they execute the job to the best of their ability and that's all we're trying to do down here as well. It is not a public performance, it is a mission that they execute that the public has the opportunity to observe. And, and with that, the connection between the public and what those sentinels do is incredibly important because it is not only represents our commitment to those that gave the ultimate sacrifice without the opportunity to be identified. But it, rec it represents the public trust that the military has in honoring those that have served and connecting the American public with that service. Because it's a sentinel in some instances, in many cases, up close, in person, at the tomb for the changing of a guard, may be the only interaction that a member of the public may ever have with somebody in the military. The, the why we're here is kind of lost on the, the general public. You know, they see, they see the guard out there performing the ceremony and they think that's kind of, that's the thing, that's the tomb, you know, it's, it's the guard there. Um, but really, you know, it's, it's us maintaining the, the dignity and atmosphere that an unknown soldier is deserving of. Because um, that's, that's, you know, not only did they give their lives for their country, but they also gave their identities. Um, and so we're kind of, making sure that they're always receiving that utmost respect in that regard. And I feel, I feel that's often lost. Um, you know, it's kind of, it becomes the guard more than, than the unknown soldier themselves. That makes sense. Throughout the vigil, I think to myself, I'm like, wow, like I actually have personal time with the known unknowns. Like I have that soul, like, connection because like you're like dang like these people really like fought for us you know what i'm saying and they actually died for us obviously you know for this country so the fact that i'm paying my tributes to them like it's just the, it means the world to me it is a connection from a distance uh the posting of the guard and the execution of the duties at the tomb it's it's not designed to be an interactive uh, its ex experience but what we do hope is that in the process of having that interaction a process of seeing that that the public can see firsthand really the professionalism, the de dedication to duty that we commit to that mission uh, and kind of by virtue of that, that we commit to all missions because that, that's kind of what that represents. On three instances since 1921, the remains of unknown servicemen have been interred at the west base of the tomb of the unknown soldier, each with their own crypt. Following World War II, some Americans supported the idea of interring and honoring an unknown from that war. However, the start of the Korean War in 1950 delayed those plans. In August 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower approved the selection and interment of unknowns from both World War II and Korea, which happened in May of 1958. The Vietnam Unknown Soldier was interred in 1984, but was removed in 1998 after modern science identified the serviceman. DNA analysis enabled him to be positively identified as U.S. Air Force First Lieutenant Michael Blasky. And initially we were like, we don't want that unknown to be identified, we want him to be here, uh, we're taking care of him. But as we talked more about it, um, we realized that, you know, that this is an opportunity for the family to to know where their family member is. Uh, that night that they came here to do the disinterment of the Vietnam Unknown, the entire uh, Tomb Guard organization was here. Uh, all the reliefs, uh, myself, uh, the assistant sergeant of the guard, 
We're here because we want, want to be part of it. Got to know the Blassie family, um, and we're very honored that they have now uh, reconnected with their, their brother, their son, um, and now he's buried in a, another cemetery in Missouri. DNA identification techniques now suggest there will be no more unknowns. That crypt remains empty, but a marker was placed honoring those 80,000 American servicemen still missing in action since the beginning of the 20th century. When you're two o'clock in the morning, standing on the plaza with the shadow of your self projecting on the crypt covers in front of you, realizing that those three individuals are what they are. They're the connection from the veteran to the community to the service member. And that's what I take away from it. I can't speak on behalf of what other Sentinels take away from it. As a mother, as a wife, uh, that's what I take away from it. This is the most visited cultural resource that we have and all of Arlington National Cemetery. And we think it's because people are connected. They are connected to come here and see the very symbol of sacrifice and service to this great nation. Americans have served in every conflict. And so it connects with everybody. It connects not just with our, our American visitors, but our visitors, our heads of state from other nations, uh, chief of staff of armies of other nations. People come here because it is very personal and it's a very emotional experience. For me, the tomb is a representative of what commemoration looks like in action. So it shows us how we as Americans have really created different rituals to honor and remember our military service. How we have taken one site within the cemetery and transformed it into a space that is in many ways really sacred and full of ritual. And for me, I think I really like to connect with how the tomb has evolved because it started as just one grave for one unknown American service member from World War I that was intended to really be a collective grave to honor everybody. And then it changed over the years as the nation fought in subsequent conflicts and we had different unknowns from those conflicts added and more and more people became able to connect to the tomb and take it on as their own. But today even, as people directly connected to many of those conflicts are either passing away or aging, new generations see this tomb as their own, even if they don't know anybody who fought in these wars. And I think that evolution to me is really important because it helps you take in why these children are up there so mesmerized by the tomb. Our army is our people and we are asking America to entrust us with their most sacred resource, which is their sons and daughters. And throughout history, some of those sons and daughters have given their lives and not had the opportunity to be recognized. Uh, that is incredibly significant, to be this national shrine where we recognize and honor not just the unknowns who were entoured at the tomb, but this is the place where we recognize as a nation the over 100,000 unknowns that are buried around the world uh, who died on behalf of their nation without the opportunity to be uh, recognized. With that, the tomb, the way it is designed, the way the unknowns were selected, the ways they were interned, the way we execute the vigil over the tomb right now is all designed to create this environment commensurate with kind of that solemnity uh, to recognize this. One thing will always be a fixture of that site, and that's the sentinel that's standing um, every day, rain or shine. And so we hope and we encourage and we believe that this is a special place. And the opportunity to share that special place with the American public so that they can bear witness to that, that sacrifice and bear witness to our eternal commitment as a nation to that sacrifice, uh, not just for the unknowns that are there, but all of them uh, is something that's, that's truly special uh, and that we're proud to be a part of. 100 years after the World War I unknown's burial, the tomb of the unknown soldier continues to be a powerful symbol of service and sacrifice.
mourning, and memory. Order! Right shoulder! Oh! 